So I don't have much other than the fact that if right now, and I, I know we still have people trickling in, but if at this moment you do not have your Scrabble score demoed and graded, I would strongly urge you to go into office hours right now and find a TA that has office hours that work for you and contact that TA or book book a session right. or um, yeah, come up with a, a plan for your current TAs because we have plenty of time, okay. but we need to create a sense of urgency around getting assignments done on time before the due date or what will happen is something I've seen happen time and time again is people will be uh, relaxed, everybody procrastinates, but once it gets to a certain point, there is just, um, it is very, very, very difficult to come back from two or three assignments uh, in two weeks time. And so I do wanna keep that August 14 deadline in the front of everybody's minds because I want everybody to get through. Um, and it seems like it's very far away, but uh, this unit goes quickly. And we do have quite a few assignments to go. And yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about the assignment stuff. Other than that, um, we have another meetup scheduled for St. Louis. It's July 22nd. So it's another Saturday at 1 p.m. And uh, we will be looking around for um, for uh, other opportunities, other times to host at. So if you have any suggestions or any times that you would like to, to see hosted, we're thinking about a Sunday um, or maybe even something midday during the week. Uh, if enough people are interested, we can make it happen. But um, yeah, those are all the announcements that I have. Uh, and Rick will be posting a link for the, the TAs shortly for a uh, TA meeting. And thank you very much, Carrie. Okie doke. Thanks, Colin. All right. Everyone should be seeing my screen again get the stuff I really need out front here. Okay, so tonight we are talking about classes in JavaScript. This is a big topic. It's a very important topic. Um, and it's the last thing that you need for graded assignment three. Uh, so I'll go through this real quick. Um, yeah, so that deadline is coming up and classes is the last thing you need to uh, complete graded assignment three. So you can jump on that. Um, again, I have this intro video available for anyone who hasn't seen it um, or wants to watch it again. Uh, you can go to the graded assignment intros playlist on my YouTube channel and find it. Um, and it'll walk you through the instructions, the starter code, and kind of give you a demo of what it looks like when all your tests are passing. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Yes, and then the upcoming meetups, I've got this updated. The next one for Kansas City is on July 8th, the next one for Philly is on July 11th. And as Colin said, the next one for St. Louis is on the 22nd. All right, let's talk about classes. I'm gonna go through uh, just conceptually what a class is and then you know how to code one, um, all the syntax that you need to do that. And uh, you know how you define properties, how you uh, then, you know, create objects from classes, and then how you can actually define methods inside it, as well as properties. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, class inheritance and do some examples on that. It, there isn't really a lot in your book about that, so I'm going to do a couple of examples to help you know fully uh, how to kind of use the syntax to your advantage, because uh, it's a great topic. Um, we will actually talk way more about class inheritance um, when we get to the unit two um, in Java. But it is good to know, you know, really kind of have a good picture in your mind of how it works. It'll help you understand classes a lot more if you understand inheritance now. Um, and then uh, we'll kind of 
uh, go through a really quick thing that also isn't in your book, just to, on how you can verify class identity um, and inheritance. So let's get into the beginning. Let's talk about the concept. So you remember when we had um, the lecture on objects, I had this example of the apple and the orange, right? And how they had the exact same properties, um, name, color, you know, is it a citrus or not? Um, and you really could say, you know, those both are things that have the same kinds of attributes. And um, so, you know, in the exact same properties, we can define them the same way. So why not have a way to do that uh, by using a class? And you could call it fruit, for example. Um, and you could just say, I want every single object that is a fruit to have these same properties. Um, and then you can create as many as you want to once you do that. Uh, and then they, every single one will automatically have those properties. And there's a very easy way to create them instead of having to hard code all of them, you know, one at a time with all the same properties over and over again. Um, so we'll get to how to do that in just a second. Let's look first at how to define the class with code. Um, and then I'll show you how to create an object from, the, from that definition. So if you want to declare a class in JavaScript, you use the class keyword, go figure. Um, and the name of the class should actually be in what's called Pascal case. It's like camel case, except for you do, do actually capitalize that first uh, character. And um, then you want to uh, do like you do when you're defining you know, other uh, types of things and use the curly braces to enclose, you know, encapsulate that block of code. And then there's this thing called a constructor that is going to allow you to set the properties. Um, and then you can also define methods. Um, and this is kind of the broad strokes here, class keyword uh, right here, then you give it a name, and then you have this entire definition inside the curly braces, right? And then um, you can define those properties and define the methods, uh, preferably here below the constructor. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but th those are that's the, the big picture. So let's look at how you actually define these properties inside this constructor. And we'll talk a little bit about what that constructor actually is. All right, so the constructor is defined with the keyword constructor. And it's a special anonymous function. It's actually a function. Um, and you give it parameters so that every single object that's created from the class can have all of its properties set with certain values. This is how you are able to very quickly create the object just by um, passing these values into this constructor. So um, in this case, we have, uh, you know, uh, the, the constructor set here with the parentheses for the parameters and then the brackets for the function body. And uh, we've got for fruit, we've got name, color, and is citrus. So every single property needs to be set then inside that function one at a time. And you use the keyword this to refer to the property itself. So um, in the example here, you can see that, uh, sorry, give me just a second. There we go. Um, each property should be set uh, with a value. Um, so like, it's either gonna be one of the parameters that you are pass, you know, where you're passing in the arguments, or you might just have a, a property that's like a default value that's not actually a parameter. So we have examples of both of those things here. You can see that I've got this dot name is being set with the value of name that's being passed in here. This dot color is set with color that's being passed in here. This dot is citrus is being set with a citrus. Now, if this is optional, so uh, by, by defining a value right here, and uh, you remember from functions that that means it's optional, right? So that means you could actually cr create a fruit object with just name and color, and then is citrus would automatically have that false value, but it's getting it from here. And then here, um, this dot num slices is actually a property that exists as part of the object but it just gets a default value of null down here. And we don't actually make it something that gets passed in when you're creating the object uh, at the time that you're creating an instance of the class. Uh, oops, I need one more. There we go, had, had another uh, 
bullet point it didn't quite make it on the slide okay so uh, again let's revisit um, how this is all kind of put together we've got a constructor uh, keyword and this is a special anonymous function we've got a couple of required parameters name and color and then we've got an optional parameter is citrus that has a default value so that we can leave it off if we want to and then all four properties name color citrus is citrus and num slices are set on these four lines of code one at a time um, by by just giving them the values that we want them to have either from up here or in the case of this one we're just saying we don't know how many uh slices it's going to be in until we cut it and so that's going to come later right um so then those are the value assignments there on the right side for those property names that you're setting here okay this, that, that aspect of this was something I did not understand uh, right away when I was a student. And I wanted to make sure that you understand when you see this dot name and you see name and then you see name up here, just so that you know what the relationships are here. That's kind of important um, on you, know, you deciding how you're going to create a class when you're defining one for yourself. You need to understand the difference between them. Okay, so uh, I used a word a second ago that I want you to understand. So this word instantiation, I don't think it's in your book, but it gets, tossed around a lot and you need to know what it means. So um, we say that an object created from a class is referred to as an instance of the class. You can have a class definition and then every single object you create that's patterned on that class is an instance, one, one of many instances um, that uses, uses the class as a basis for the object uh, properties and methods. So instantiation is the process then of um, creating an object from a class. It has a very simple syntax. You just declare your object variable um, and then you use this keyword new. You guys actually saw this um, on Monday when we were uh, creating a new error, right? Of the error class. Um, this is the same, same exact syntax. And then you use a class name and give the constructor the specific values that you want to assign to the properties that they correspond to. So in this example here, I've got, you know, uh, let Fuji equal new fruit. And then I'm passing in the name is Fuji apple and the color is red. And I'm not giving it a citrus because I have that defaulted to be false, right? Uh, so same thing for Granny Smith. It's a new fruit. The name is Granny Smith apple. The color is green. And then with navel, uh, that's a new fruit. Its name is navel orange. Its color is orange and is citrus is being set to true instead of the default uh, false. So these are um, just examples of how you would very quickly spin up these objects without having to uh, hard code them. You know, it would be pretty tedious. Um, and that's just looking at the properties. We haven't even gotten to the methods yet. So uh, again, there's that keyword new, there's the class name. And these are the arguments you're passing into the constructor so that it can assign them to the properties. Okay, uh, one or two more slides, I think one more, and then we're actually gonna do some coding, I promise. Uh, but I wanna talk about methods. So um, again, we'll use our, our example fruit class here. You can assign methods two ways, actually. Um, because methods are really just a special property of an object, um, they can be added as anonymous functions inside the constructor for a class, uh, like you see with the you know, describe um, method here. But uh, what that means is that a, an exact copy of this function is going to be stored with every single object, which has you know, implications um, for you know, efficiency and memory and all those things. Uh, so the other way to do it is actually to add a named function after the constructor, like cut down here, um, here. <laughs> and uh, that would actually uh, be stored with the class uh, so that every object has access to it, but it's not being stored in multi multiple copies. It's only being stored once. So uh, typically you're going to want, there's, sometimes there could be reasons, but we're not, it's kind of out of the scope of, of the class. So. Uh, for now, just kind of um, focus on writing your methods below the constructor. Just make sure they're inside the class definition. Um, that's a mistake that I made a couple of times when I was new at this. Uh, they do have to be inside the class definition, but they need to be after the constructor um, function here. Okay, so um, there's that anonymous function. There's the named function. All right, let me 
go jump into some code. Um, we'll code some of this out and then um, I'll take some questions about this portion before we take a break. Okay, so we are going to code the fruit class. Um, got some, uh, let me, I think I made this smaller earlier and I need to get it bigger. That might be too big. Can you guys read this? Is that enough, good enough? Yeah, okay, all right, <laughs> just wanna make sure. Uh, you can read it, that would be helpful. Okay, so we've got um, an index.js file, just so you know, kind of know where we are. I've got an index.js file. That's the one that gets run when I hit the run button, right? Um, so uh, you're going to, uh, we're going to define our classes in separate modules. So I actually have uh, a bunch of imports here from each of those files for all five of these classes. And right now we're just gonna concentrate on fruit. So what I've done is I've put all of the classes here and then I've put the index.js file in the middle here so that we can actually refer to them side by side. It'll be helpful in your understanding of what we're doing um, to have it laid out this way. Um, okay, so we have a fruit class. We're gonna basically uh, recreate um, what you saw on the slide and then we're gonna do, you know, kind of put it all together and you'll see it all at once. So it says to uh, you know, create this class with um, the three params, name, color, and is citrus, right? So I've already got the class keyword, the name of the class, and the brackets for defining the entire class definition. So what I wanna do is go inside here and uh, write this constructor function. And I'm going to say name, color, is citrus. Those are the three, um, the three, and it says to default this one to false. So I'm going to do that. And then I have the brackets for this function. And uh, this is where I need to one at a time set the properties for the object that's going to be created from this class. So I'll say this.name equals name, this.color equals color, and this.is citrus equals um, is citrus. Okay it's gonna get its value from here one way or another. Um, by the way, these don't have to be the same name. Uh, you'll see sometimes in some references and places when people are teaching this kind of stuff, they'll do things like this. They'll say like a name, a color, um, you know, et cetera. And then that means that you have to change this one. And they do that just to make it really clear that this is coming from here, just like this is coming from here, it's passed in and then it's being set, but these are the actual property names of the object that's gonna be created. Um, so uh, I, I prefer to keep it straightforward and this is, how, this is how it's been done professionally everywhere I've worked. So um, now we want to add a fourth property, num slices, that's not actually part of the parameters and we need to give it a default value and then it can be changed later. And really we're just saying, we want null because we want a placeholder. Uh, we know this is going to have some sort of value later, um, and we don't want to say zero, so we're just going to say null. Um, and I mean, I guess technically you could say it has exactly one slices because it hasn't been sliced yet. It's just one, right? But that's still kind of, uh, you know, screwy. So, okay. The next thing we're going to do is uh, add an anonymous uh, method here. Now, again, I recommend against doing it this way, but I want to demonstrate it for you once. So we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, we're just going to say this dot describe equals function, and it's just going to be an anonymous function here. And I'll just say, you know, return. And the only thing I really want to do here is just put together the color and uh, the name. And notice both times I am, <laughs> okay, both times I am using that keyword this. Anytime you're referring internally to one of its own properties or methods, you have to use this to do that uh, because you don't have an object yet. This is just the class definition. So you use this instead. Um, okay, so we have that. And uh, then the last thing is to add a named method cut. So we'll add another one. Now, when you are inside a class definition, you don't use the function keyword. You just say cut directly like this. Um, we're going to give it a number, how many pieces to cut it into. And it says the first thing that it needs to do is to update uh, the num slices property. So we can do that just by saying this.numslices equals num. 
And then we can print something just to kind of uh, confirm that it's been done. So I'm gonna say the this dot describe, and this is where I'm gonna actually reference my own method, um, the other method that I wrote here, so that we can just get the color and the name together um, because we've already created a way to do that, is now in, uh, hold on, oh yeah, this dot num slices pieces, okay. So we're using, um, we've updated this now, and so now this reflects uh, whatever that number was, and we can refer to that value and print this out. So we've got our whole definition um, written, um, four properties, a fifth one that is actually a method, and then a, a separate method down here. So let's come down here and uh, make use of it. So this is where we actually use our, our syntax with that new keyword so that we can create the objects. And we're gonna give each one of them their own variable to store that object. So I'll say let Fuji equal new fruit. And then um, I pa start passing in, you know, Fuji apple and red. And uh, let's just test this here before we create the other two. Console.log Fuji. Okay, I don't know why it jumps like that. Wow, that's new. All right, hold on. Let me see. There we go. <laughs> All right, um, so we can see right there that we've got uh, this. So this did not work. So, uh, oh, thank you. Somebody has just underlined it for me. I wrote construction instead of constructor. So this tells you how important that, that the constructor actually is. You'll notice that it did not create anything. It didn't know how to create the object because I didn't have that done correctly. So that syntax is essential. Ah, sometimes mistakes are the great, greatest teaching tools, right? Um, so yeah, so it has to say constructor and you have to be able to pass these in. So now, you know what? This, this explains something though I was wondering about is why when I started creating this, it wasn't prompting me for it. So now if I do this, yeah, there we go. You can see that it knows what the constructor is expecting and it's telling me it expects the name, the color and is citrus, you know, with a question mark. Um, you'll see that question mark sometimes uh, as it's basically just saying, that's telling you that it's optional um, if you ever see that. Okay, uh, so new fruit. So we'll do this again, Fuji, apple, and then red. And then when I run this again, now we see uh, Fuji apple red is citrus is false. Num slices is null. Describe is an anonymous function that you know doesn't print out for us. And then you'll notice that cut is uh, missing. That's because it's stored at the class level and not stored as part of the object. Um, so that's actually normal. But we can come down here and finish this up, and we'll we'll test each of these out, and you'll kind of see how they work. So I'm going to create the other two. Let Granny Smith equal new fruit. Granny Smith apple and green. Wow, I don't know what's up there. It's either my fingers or the keyboard or both, I don't know. And then uh, navel equals new fruit, navel orange, color is orange. And this time we wanna say true for is citrus to make sure that it sets uh, that to true and not the default faults. Um, and then I can log uh, Granny Smith and I can log Navel. And we'll be able to see all three of them have the exact same structure uh, because they're all based in this fruit class. They all have name, color, is citrus, num slices, and describe. And then of course they also have cut. We just can't see it. Um, they have access to cut might be a better way to say that. Um, and they, But they have their own unique properties um, and we did not have to type all of this out to create those objects. We just had to have a, this single line like this. Okay, so let's uh, look at some of these properties, right? We can print the color of the Fuji apple. So I will console log Fuji.color. And we see red. Um, I can describe the navel orange. Um, so I will say console.log navel.describe and call it because it is a method. 
there we go. Uh, orange navel orange <laughs> because because orange. Okay, uh, and then we can cut both of apples into different numbers of pieces. So let's just say, uh, and this one I can just cut directly because it's got a console log built into it. So I'm just going to say cut. Um, oh no no no! I have to call it on the object. So uh, both apples. Fuji dot cut, and let's give it you know four pieces. And then maybe we say Granny Smith dot cut and give it eight pieces. And we'll run that. And then we see the red Fuji apple is now in four pieces. The green Granny Smith apple is now in eight pieces. So um, everything that we built, you know, put together with all of these references here, all came together to form these, you know, statements here that were printed out based, you know, using all of the, the data that's stored inside that object. Um, and we only had to define it once for the whole class and uh, it's accessible to every single object created by the class. Okay, so that's the basis of how to write a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript class and how to use one. So does anybody have any questions about what we've talked about so far? I actually had a really quick uh, question about uh, classes. This is actually from the part of the uh, reading. I remember it said something about you can establish a class and then you can have like uh, the child and there's like the constructor. Um, I don't want to say mostly variables. I guess I think they called uh, arguments. And then, then you have like the super. Yep. Class. We're going to. All right, cool. Yeah, we're, that's, that's actually the vast majority of what we're going to be doing uh, after the break is all about inheritance. So we'll be getting really deep into it. Okay, that's sweet. Because I, I was reading through and it's like, well, you can actually have like the same names for the child. And I was like, well, why not just use yeah. it? Well, I figure we'll, we'll learn in class. So yeah, never mind. I've got, so, I've got <laughs> thanks. Some, some pretty uh, extensive examples that'll fill out a lot of that for you and, and help solidify it for you. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Because classes are really cool, but I'm like, this is a little bit confusing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brittany? Hey, um, when you are creating a new class, um, so whenever you did like the default value for is citrus, if that was like something that we didn't want to be changed, could we just say this dot is citrus is equal to false and not put it in the constructor parameter? Yeah. Just like put it in the in the body. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't prevent it from being changed uh, exactly. Um, you're you're going to have ways of of that kind of control over your objects um, of classes with Java. Um, it's not something we're really going to get into with JavaScript. Um, JavaScript was not originally built as you know for object oriented programming. Classes are relatively new. Uh, for JavaScript. And, um, but yeah, if you didn't want to ever make it optional, then just leave it off like I did num slices and just, you know, just give it some sort of value here instead of passing something down. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Courtney? Hey, so um, you may have answered this, but um, just reading into the chapter, I mentioned parameters. Would that be like a huge thing in the graded assignment three. Um, you're talking about the way parameters are defined in classes, right? Yeah, you're going to be um, you're going to be coding uh, three different classes. Actually, the first one is already coded for you, I think. But um, the you're going to be uh, coding them, and you're going to be setting uh, you know setting your parameters and setting your values very similarly to this. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, mm -hmm. Gabe. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question. So does it, I know that probably best practice is you put the constructor first, but is it necessary? Like, could you have put cut above constructor there? Um, I believe, I believe technically you can, but it's common convention to always put the constructor first and uh, methods last. Okay, cool. And when, we, when we get to Java, there's going to be more moving parts. Um, so going ahead and getting the structure in your mind now is good because then you can just kind of expand on that later. Sure. Yeah. I just want to make sure that the order didn't necessarily matter, like if it did or didn't. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, if, with the function keyword being left off of here, I don't think that it changes the fact that it's still a regular named function. So uh, that pro that might mean, because the constructor runs immediately when you instantiate an object. It's the first thing that runs. 
And this only executes if you call it. So it shouldn't matter if it was somewhere else, but mm -hmm. uh, what's expected is that it's never gonna be in front of the constructor. So. Got it. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, uh, Yaya? So if we uh, console log the object uh, after we have the number of slices uh, as null first, would it be like number of slices equals something? Um, so that's that's a really uh, great uh, question. So let's look and see what happens if we do that. Um, let's say uh, before I cut these apples, um, I actually uh, you know console log. I mean, it should just come out as null. Um, sorry, not this. <laughs> uh, Fuji dot num slices. It, it, the value itself null is a is a you know proper value. So it's going to come out as null, just like that. Um, if you were to try to use it in a in a you know sentence, oh wow, replets being dumb, y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, if I was to try to use it in a template literal um, like this, um, then it's just the string value null. It just stringifies it. So that's all that really happens. Okay. So, okay, makes sense. So it's not a part of the object. Say it again. It's not a part of the object, right? I mean, the, the Fuji object, let's say. Or it is a part of the object, but it's null. It's a property. It's just that it doesn't have its value is null. It doesn't have a string or a number or anything like that stored okay. in it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, and uh, I don't know what's going on with Replit today, guys. It's being crazy, um, but that's okay. Uh, all right. I think that's all the questions, and we uh, can take a break. And then uh, we will come back in five minutes uh, and we'll start talking about inheritance.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's talk about inheritance. So uh, the idea here is that you can have one child that's based, um, excuse me, one class called a child that's based on another class, which we refer to as the parent. And uh, so just like with genetics, the parent passes down um, its properties and methods to the child class. But um, you can then define additional properties and methods um, for the child class that don't exist as part of the parent and customize it, make it um, you know, a little bit more specific usually. Um, and that was apparently all of that slide. Okay, so uh, next we'll talk about the actual syntax for this. So the extends keyword is used when you want to specify which class should be the parent class that it's going to inherit from. So I have the, um, this beverage class here um, that we're gonna code in a minute. And uh, it's got a very simple constructor, just three properties, name, ounces, and container. And uh, I've set each one of them directly into those properties from the constructor. Uh, whatever values are passed in, that's what gets said. But juice can extend beverage um, and automatically will inherit all three of those properties. Uh, so we use this constructor, uh, inheritance constructor super um, here to go ahead and pass those down. So think about this way. You're going to create a new juice and you're going to give it all of these values here. And when those get passed in, we just say, okay, we're just passing those straight along into the constructor of the parent um, so that it, they can be um, assigned like this uh, in, in the parent. Um, and then we can have our two new ones after that. Uh, you know, fruits, fruits and veggies, which will be these um, arrays. But that's what super does. And essentially, if, if uh, a value is required um, for juice that exists in, um, exists in the parent beverage, then you have to pass those down or otherwise it's not going to get those values. They're not going to be set. They're going to be undefined. Um, all right, I need to... Hold please. Okay, so there's the extends keyword and um, there's where those uh, uh, values are passed to the parent. And these are the new properties that are being created in the child class. Um, and I've also included an optional parameter on this one too, where you, know, uh, you can leave off veggies and it'll just be an empty array if you leave it off. Okay, so uh, one more concept to talk about before we code some stuff is that in addition to um, having, you know, using exactly what comes from the parent and then creating new things that aren't in the parent, you can actually also overwrite inherited values. So you can have, dang it, there we go. You can have uh, different values for properties or methods um, just by explicitly including them. So in this example here, um, I've got, uh, you know, the name, the ounces, the container, the fruits, the veggies, you, you just saw this on the other slide, right? So we pass the name and ounces and container to um, straight to beverage uh, constructor. And then we add the two more and ass assign those values to those properties. And then we say, okay, I know there's a describe method that exists um, in uh, beverage, which you guys haven't seen yet. Um, but I want to create a new one. And the first thing I wanna do is actually call the parents describe. So it goes ahead and executes that. Now this is optional, but this is gonna be an approach you might sometimes wanna take. And then I wanna do some additional stuff on top of that. And then you can write that you know, here. Um, so that, that would be one way to say, I, I wanna have uh, this child class have its own describe method. Um, and you know, I may or may not make use of the, the parents um, content you know, whatever it puts out and execute that code. Uh, but if you were gonna do that, this is how you do it. You just call it on super again, because that super stands in for the parent, whatever the parent is. Um, but if you don't do any of that, if you were to just leave this describe off, um, then it would just automatically use the parent's version of that method. Okay, um, so there's that uh, super keyword. And um, yeah, that's it. So let's go over and actually do some of this because I think it's gonna help you put it all together when we actually really get into it. 
So we've got this beverage class. This is going to be our parent class. Um, and ultimately it's gonna be a grandparent because we're gonna have a child of a child. Uh, but let's see, we're going to go here and yeah. Okay, so we have some instructions here. Um, it says define a beverage class, give the constructor three parameters, name ounces and container. So I can do that first. And then um, I, I put container like I'm you know, writing a sentence, hilarious, okay. And then we'll set them, this dot name equals name, this dot ounces equals ounces, and this dot container equals container. So now they get all the values that are passed into the constructor. Um, we're gonna add another property and call it recycled. This is gonna be a, a Boolean and we'll set it to false. Um, so this is a good example of where you don't want an optional parameter because you always want it to be false starting off. So we can set it to false um, by just doing it this way directly, um, kind of like you saw uh, setting that, you know, num slices to null um, in the other example. Um, and then we want a method, uh, we want two methods, um, and I'm gonna write them both down here. So I'm gonna have a method called recycle that's gonna do two things. First, it's gonna set the recycled property true. So we can just say this dot recycled is true. And it'll update that property. And then we will print a sentence um, that, you know, kind of as a little confirmation. Um, and because I know how much I have to do, I'm going to cut, uh, cut and paste this, okay. So I'm just gonna say that was delicious. I rinsed and recycled the container of name and we'll just use whatever the exact values are from whatever object it is, right? Um, so that's the first one. The second one is describe. So this is the one um, that I referred to on the slide and beverages version of describe, um, which may or may not be used by its children is going to be, uh, to just print a sentence that has the ounces, the container, the name. But I have this extra little thing in here and don't worry too much if you're you know, looking at this and going, I don't know how to read that. Uh, this is called a ternary operator. Um, I may or may not have shown this to you before, but the idea is that you ask, a, you have a Boolean expression that evaluates to true or false. And you say, if it's true, then I want the value to be had. If it's false, then I want the value to be have. And you just use the, the question mark and the colon to uh, execute that lo logic. And then whichever one of these, whether it's true or false, whichever one of these is the um, one that gets assigned, it gets assigned into this variable. That's what's happening. This is a very common way to do this so that you can insert op, you know, like variable text, um, depending on a little bit of logic that you've got into a template literal like this. Um, I've done this a lot for web pages. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's that's what we've got. That's kind of our basis for this, you know, this base class um, beverage. And so let's go over and actually do a little bit of work here um, to use it. So I've already imported it. So all I really need to do is um, create an object. So I can say let water equal new beverage. And then I give it, um, you know, the name, the ounces and the container. So I'm gonna say water 20 and bottle. And that's it. Now I have created a water object. So let's print it out so we can see it. <laughs> Don't know why it keeps jumping like that. Um, oh, wow. So we can see it right here. It's you know showing that it's an object of the beverage class um, and its properties are you know name ounces, container and recycled and these are its specific values. Yeah, I don't know why it's having so many issues. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. Here we are. So uh, now I can uh, describe the water by calling its method and I call it directly on that object, say water.describe and we run it. And we get, um, I have a 20 ounce bottle of water. So it, 
uh, you know, came into here and it said, okay, is recycled true or false? And it says, well, it's false. So I'm gonna choose have, and then it put that into here. Um, and it said, I have a ounces, you know, container of name. And it just pulled all of those values into that, you know, thing ag again, just like we did before with fruit. And um, we have a nice little sentence there that has very specific information about this object. So um, here we want to recycle the water. So I'm going to say water got recycled. Okay, uh, that was delicious. I rinsed and recycled the bottle of water. Um, now we can describe the water again, and we'll notice that that ternary is going to um, come out a little different. And now it's going to say, uh, I had a 20 ounce bottle of water now that I have drunk it and recycled it. Um, okay, so good heavens. I don't know what's going on. All right, so um, that's it for beverage. Uh, so what we wanna do now is actually have a juice class that is going to inherit from um, beverage. So we need to go over and set that up. So keep in mind, um, it's gonna inherit name ounces, container recycled, recycle method and describe method. It'll inherit all of it, um, but only some of it we have to specify. So. We'll come in here and create this class. And um, I've already got it set up here with the uh, juice extends beverage. So all we need to do then is uh, start setting the constructor and whatnot, um, the constructor and the methods. So let's do constructor first always and do name ounces container because we still have to give it those, but we also wanna give it fruits and veggies. And we wanna make veggies optional by assigning an empty array in case there aren't any veggies. Um, and then inside here, we just um, first call the super uh, constructor for the parent and pass in the three things that it needs to set those values into the object. And then we set the values for the new stuff. And this dot veggies equals veggies. Okay, um, so that's it. That you know that alone would be enough. Um, but we do have uh, another instruction here that says overwrite the inherited describe method to include a list of fruits and veggies, one on each line. Um, so we'll have to do a little logic for that. Um, it says do not overwrite recycled or recycle. Um, so we're ignoring. Um, you know, re recycled was something that was set without the without the um, parameters in the constructor. So we don't need to worry about it. It's already set to false, just like before. And um, the recycled, or no, excuse me, recycle uh, method is something that we, we wanna just use it just like it is. So we're not gonna, you know, overwrite it. Um, but describe, we will overwrite. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say describe. I really think I have like, something on my keyboard that's wonky when I do my parentheses. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, describe and then the first thing I actually wanna do for this one is call the original describe method, the one that I am overriding um, for this class um, and let it go ahead and say exactly what's said um, for, you know, uh, you know, I have, or I had a, you know, how many or many ounce uh, container of name. Um, it's going to do that first. And then we're gonna have um, a little extra content. It's gonna say, um, it contains the following. And then I'm going to uh, have a little bit of work to do here. So I'm gonna create, first of all, I wanna, I wanna include, both arrays. I want it to be the fruits and the veggies all together. Now there are many ways to do this, but one of the ways that you may remember from um, the arrays chapter when you learned about array methods is uh, concat. So we can uh, take uh, this dot fruits and actually uh, it should not be necessary to do the this dot fruits and then concatenate this dot veggies. 
And then it'll put just take all of the stuff from both of them and put them in a single array. And then we can iterate over that array and print out each item one on each one on a line. So I'm just going to do a simple um, for loop. Oops. Okay, and all I'm going to do is console log. I'm going to have a little template literal here. And I'm going to tab it in just so it looks more like it's more readable as a list. Um, and I forgot my opening bracket there. So let me fix that. And then I'm going to just say ingredients at index I and close it um, so that it'll do each one one at a time and print them out for us. OK, so I think we have everything we need now to test this class out. So we're going to create three uh, objects of the juice class. I'm going to start with orange juice. Let orange juice equal new juice. And now we need to give it um, you know, all the same values uh, for, uh, that were in beverage, name, ounces, and container. So I'll do that first. Uh, orange juice. And then we'll say, can't see all of my stuff here. Okay, there we go. Uh, we'll say that that's 16 ounces and it's in a bottle and um, it has fruit. So we'll give it that, um, but, and, and just oranges uh, and it doesn't have any veggies. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, leave it off since veggies is optional. I set it up that way on purpose. Okay, and then I can create, uh, let apple juice equal new juice and give it apple juice, 14 ounces, can, and apples. Same thing, only fruit. Um, but then maybe I say, let V8 equal uh, new juice. And we'll say V8 is the name, 20 is the ounces, glass bottle is the container, um, and then we're going to say, you know, it has tomatoes is really the only technical fruit that it has. Everything else are veggies. So we will use that for the fruit array, but then pass in an array with multiple other things. Let's see, carrots, celery, beets. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I spilled something on my keyboard last night and I wonder if that's why I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. <laughs> watercress. Watercress. Who knew? And spinach. Okay. A whole lot of veggies in there. Which is why it's so chock full of stuff. Okay. Um, so we have three objects now. Let's print them out. All right, let's run it. All right, here we go. So we can see that um, all of the properties that we expected are there, including recycled, even though we didn't specify it here because it automatically it gets inherited even if we don't need to do anything with it here. Um, and you know these arrays have all of their things. Ve Veggies has uh, an empty array for these two since we left it off. Um, which is what we expected. Okay, let's describe the V8. I'm going to say V8.describe. Now we're going to see um, what happens with our new describe. You know, we should get all the same, the same sentence that came from the parent plus this additional stuff. Yeah, so we see I have a 20 ounce glass bottle of V8. That's because of this right here, the super.describe. That's coming directly from the parent in, in uh, beverage. But then I have additional stuff. It contains the following, and then it looped through um, the combined arrays from the fruits and veggies and printed each of them on a separate line tabbed over. Um, okay, now let's uh, prove that recycle is still there, even though we don't see it anywhere here, by recycling the apple juice. That was delicious. I rinsed and recycled the can of apple juice. Okay. So um, yeah, so 
there again, uh, I hope that helps you see uh, how that inheritance works. Um, it really does get everything from the parent. Um, you can add new things to it here and here. Uh, and then you can also uh, modify um, or overwrite something that is in the parent if you want to. And you can even make use of what was in the parent as part of that if you would like to. Okay, so uh, let me see if there are any questions before I go on to the other two classes. Uh, Mohammed? Um, yeah, I have a question of why we need to include the super in the constructor. constructor. Like, what would happen if we leave it out? Um, okay, uh, let's run it. Um, must call super constructor before accessing this or returning from derived constructor. So we're referring um, to, uh, we're um, like, it's expecting this object to have values being set because, um, let's see, the original, here we go. The original class sets them right here, right? This mm -hmm. is the constructor for that class. So if we don't if we don't run this constructor, then it, it can't actually inherit and, and set all of those things properly in Juice. Um, okay. So basically, what this is doing is saving you a lot of work because you don't have to go back and include all four of these lines again. You okay. just make use of that constructor to pass those along, and then you only have to add what's new. Okay, I see. So that's what allows us to use everything in that. Previous, yeah, uh, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's how you set. Yeah, that's how you set them. Okay, any Thank other you. questions before we move on? We're going to be doing more of this. So you'll hear me explaining some of this stuff again. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on. So we did juice uh, as a child of beverage. Now let's go over and do soda, which is also going to be a child of beverage. So it's essentially gonna be a sibling of uh, juice. They'll have some things in common, but they won't have everything in common. So we're going to uh, start with a constructor. And um, I've already used extends beverage here to make sure that it knows that beverage is what it's inheriting from. And then in this one, let me make sure I'm doing this uh, the way I intend to. Yeah, we really just have this one additional property here has caffeine that we're gonna add to this one. So I'm just gonna have the original three that uh, are coming from beverage, name, ounces, and container. And then I'm gonna add has caffeine. And that's a Boolean that'll either be true or false. Um, in this case, I'm going to require it um, that you actually pass it in, um, which, you know, it's a decision. Um, you could actually say, I want it to always default to one or the other, but in this case, I want to always, it always to be specified. So um, all I have to do then again is call super and pass along the name ounces and container so that the beverage constructor can set those for us. And then I can just say this has caffeine equals has caffeine and it'll just take whatever value is passed in here. Um, and then let's see, do I want to, oh yeah, I wanna overwrite uh, describe. So we're going to do a describe here. And let's see, this time, this time I am uh, going to uh, basically use what we have in beverage as a template, but I'm going to want to change some things about it. So I'm actually going to copy the code from inside here um, because I can't, I can't use it directly. I just want to like use an, another version of it. So I'm gonna copy it and then we're gonna modify it. So this thing that I uh, called status, I'm actually just gonna make this real specific and say have <laughs> or had and uh, change that here because I have a second one of these that I wanna write based on uh, caffeine. I'm gonna say caffeine status um, equals, and then we'll just check, does it have caffeine? And if it does, we'll say it's caffeinated. And if not, we'll say it's caffeine free. Those are the terms we wanna use. Um, and then we can add that into this statement um, by saying, um, 
right here in front of name, we can just add another little placeholder here and say um, caffeine status. And it'll put in either caffeinated or caffeine free before the name of the be beverage. Um, so it's you know just a modification of what we had in, in the parent. But it was worth you know completely rewriting it uh, because it was different enough. Okay, so let's go over and uh, test this sucker out. We've got um, create Dr. Pepper and Sprite objects. And then we will, you know, test out some things here. Um, okay, so uh, let Dr. Pepper equals new soda. And then I'm gonna give it the name. Actually, I think technically there's no period with Dr. Pepper. I could be wrong about that. Uh, and I'm going to pass in true because we now have soda has this new property, um, this new parameter that, that beverage didn't have, has caffeine. So I'm going to say true. Um, and then when I do Sprite, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll say it's a 20 ounce, uh, 20 ounce. And then we're going to say can for now. And we're gonna say false, it's not caffeinated. Um, and then we say, oh, sh shoot, that Sprite was supposed to be in a bottle. And so, you know, maybe we need to go back later and fix it after it's already been created in our system, whatever, you know, that is. And so uh, I can actually do that just by saying Sprite container equals bottle. And now we're good to go. Um, now we'll describe the Sprite. We'll use the method, um, this new method that we wrote to overwrite the parents one and we'll run that. And now we see it says, I have a 20 ounce bottle of caffeine free Sprite. So it did update that property. Um, I forgot to actually log these um, objects though. Let's do that so you can see what they look like. Yeah, so we see uh, a soda object uh, for Dr. Pepper, another soda object for Sprite. Um, they have, you know, recycled in there and they also have uh, the recycle method. Um, so we can do that. We can, you know, recycle the Dr. Pepper and then describe it. So let's do that. Call that method and then um, call the describe method. Okay, that was delicious. I rinsed and recycled the can of Dr. Pepper. I had a 12 ounce, you know, past tense, a 12 ounce can of caffeinated Dr. Pepper. So um, everything uh, works just as before, but of course, you know, uh, the difference here is that these have fruits and veggies and these have half, you know, has caffeine. So they, again, they, they have things that are in common with each other because they both inherit from beverage but they also have unique things um, that don't exist in the other. Mal, you have a quick question? Yeah, I was just wondering, is there some way to um, use a method in a child class and kind of send it back up and use it in the parent class? <laughs> like, let's say we wanted to use that new describe um, that we used for the extension, we used for the child soda, and we wanted to apply it to beverage. So does that make sense? It does. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, because describe exists um, and it has its own version, it's mm -hmm. it's going. If you had a, a object that was of the beverage class, it's going to use its own describe instead of this right. one. But even if it didn't, and you were trying to do that, that's a concept called polymorphism that we really will talk more about when we get to Java and unit two. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it would be problematic because we have uh, stuff here that depends on um, properties that don't exist um, on a beverage. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it would depend on how the object was created to begin with, but right. um, yeah. Uh, hold that question until unit two, because when we get into Java, we're, we're going to have, uh, it's it's more complex, but it also is a lot more interesting in terms of how okay. you evaluate some of those things. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Zach, uh, you had another question? Yeah. You cannot uh, use methods between siblings, right? It just has to be a parent and a child. Like you cannot, 
uh, like for, for example, the juice and soda, you cannot use the method from juice and soda, right? It has to be just from beverage. Yeah, in this case, um, in this case, I haven't written in either of these classes new methods that don't also exist in beverage. Um, if I had another message, like let's say for juice, I had another message that was, you know, drink juice or something, or, you know, um, then, uh, and, and if that didn't exist in soda, then yeah, I can't call that on a soda because just because they're siblings doesn't mean they have everything in common. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, these are good questions. Okay, so let's look at um, the last one we're gonna do is uh, actually diet soda. So this is where it gets uh, even more interesting because now we can say, what if we had like yet another level where the child has its own child, which makes beverage the grandparent, right? So we're gonna actually, you, you can see that I have imported the soda class here because we're actually going to extend uh, soda um, to be the parent of diet soda. So what that means is it's gonna inherit from both beverage and from soda. So let's see what this looks like. We'll do our constructor first. And uh, it'll you know, have the name, ounces and container. Those are all from uh, the grandparent beverage. It has, has caffeine because that comes from the parent soda. And then we have a new one that's just for diet soda called sweetener. And so we can use super for name, ounces, container, oops, <laughs> container, has caffeine, and sweetener. Um, and that'll take care of all of those. And then the only one that we have to set here is uh, sweetener. Okay, um, and in this one, I'm gonna do a very simple addition to uh, soda's, um, soda's uh, describe method. So I'm gonna use soda's describe method, but I wanna add to it, kind of like we did um, with juice um, from beverage. Um, Super.describe, I'm just gonna call it so that it'll go ahead and execute soda's uh, describe method. And then I'm just going to add one more little uh, console log that says it is sweetened with this dot sweetener. And um, we should see uh, both of those when, when we run this. Okay, so let's come down here. Um, we're going to uh, create some objects, of course, to work with. So we'll instantiate, uh, let's see, let Coke Zero be a new diet soda that is 12 ounces, it's in a can. Uh, it is definitely caffeinated and it use aspartame as the sweetener. Good heavens, okay. And then I'll do um, caffeine-free diet Coke I have an aunt, this is her favorite. I don't see the appeal, <laughs> she loves it. Okay, um, 10 ounces, we'll say this is a bottle, it's one of those little tiny bottles. Uh, it is not caffeinated, but it also has aspartame as the sweetener. Okay, and then we can say, let's go with Diet Pepsi, um, which is a diet soda. And we'll say this one's in a 20 ounce bottle and it is definitely caffeinated and it's actually sweetened with sucralose. Okay, so let's print those. And see what they look like. Okay, here we go. So we have all objects. They have name ounces container, recycled as false, caffeine, you know, has caffeine and sweetener. Um, so everything from uh, beverage, all four of those, it has this from soda. And now we have a new one that we've established just for this class. Um, so let's describe um, with our, our new method that is uh, making use of its parents method, but also adding something. 
So we'll describe the Diet Pepsi, dietpepsi.describe. Seriously, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So we see the sentence that comes from running the super.describe. I have a 20 ounce bottle of caffeinated Diet Pepsi. All of those things exist in soda. But we now see the additional sentence we added, it is sweetened with sucralose um, that's added here after that as part of uh, the diet soda described. Okay, and then we'll just recycle the Coke Zero. Just, to, you know, again, just to demonstrate that they do have all of these same methods that are passed all the way down from beverage. Yeah. That was delicious. I rinsed and recycled the can of Coke Zero, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, one more tiny topic we're going to talk about in a second. Um, Melanie, you have a question? Yeah. Um, so on the super, on this one, you actually put sweetener in there. That's not necessary, correct? Since it's not being oh, passed. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Yep. But it yep. doesn't seem like it hurts it either. So. No, it didn't hurt it. Um, it just, it didn't have anything to do with it. So it ignored it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything is the same. So uh, one last thing to talk about, I'm going to flip, flip back over to the slides real quick. Um, you can verify the class identity and prove uh, prove the inheritance with this instance of keyword. Um, that allows you to check um, if a class is actually, uh, if an object is part of a class. And unlike type of, which returns a string that tells you what type something is, this is different. It's actually, you're, you're creating a Boolean expression, checking an object against a class. So it looks like this, Dr. Pepper instance of soda. That's the, the Boolean expression. And if you were to console log that and evaluate it, um, it would be true. And uh, water instance of juice, um, that would definitely be false because water was created from beverage and not from juice, right? Um, but diet Pepsi instance of beverage, this is where it gets interesting because but diet Pepsi is the grandchild of beverage. So it actually uh, comes back true. It's an instance of that because it is uh, part of the family essentially. Um, so that, that's a way to kind of demonstrate that inheritance. You can check uh, that multiple ways. So we can do that really fast here. Um, use the instance of keyword to verify the class inheritance of Coke Zero. So I can do this one at a time. I can say Coke Zero. I need to console log it though. So you can see the true and false. Coke Zero, instance of, and then we'll start with its own class, Diet Soda, and uh, run it and we'll get true eventually. <laughs> there it is. True. Um, so let's do this again and let's do it with soda and we'll do it with beverage, uh, parent and grandparent. And we get three trues. True, true, true. So it definitely is all part of the family. Um, but we could try the same for Coke Zero um, with uh, juice and show that it's going to be false instance of juice, we'll run it. And, you know, it's absolutely not related to juice. Juice is a different offshoot of beverage. It's a different branch of the family. Okay, any last questions? Nope, okay. Yeah, I kind of answered questions as we went there. So, um, I will say this, uh, your, um, your graded assignment, graded assignment three does not use inheritance. It has three classes, but it's not using inheritance. It's actually using a concept called composition where you create objects of one class, and maybe like, you know, uh, set them as a value in another class or put, them, put several of them in an array that's a value of a property in another class. Um, that, that's called composition. Uh, and so if you do um, my, my backpacks um, thing that I've got on my website, uh, I, I demonstrate that for you significantly. I wish I had time to do both inheritance and that all in one lecture, but there's just not enough time. Um, but because I have done that in those other uh, videos, um, I thought that would be helpful. Okay, so um, 
you have on uh, Monday, we're get, starting to get into building little web pages. Um, so terminal and HTML, um, and then uh, catch up class on Thursday that is coming up before that deadline for graded assignment number three. So you can, guys can get lots of help for that. Then we'll talk about uh, CSS and Git on that day. And then um, the DOM and events will be the Thursday uh, of that week. Um, and this is where we start to make uh, pages. Uh, we actually start using JavaScript with our HTML and CSS to make pages interactive and responsive um, to, you know, you click on a button and something happens, right? Um, so you guys are gonna learn how to do all of that in the next couple of weeks, it's pretty exciting. Okay, uh, let's talk about Studio. You have uh, Chapter 18 Studio where you're going to define a class through candidate. You'll add properties and methods to that class and then practice using them on objects that you instantiate from that class. Um, in my uh, video, which I recorded yesterday for the solution for this, the walkthrough, um, at that time, there, there was a conflict between the name of the file and this value entry point that's in the replit configuration file because it was set to the default index.js because that's something new that replit just introduced recently. However, today the ed team fixed it. Um, and in my video, I, I decided to go the route of changing the file name back to index.js. But what they actually decided to do was to go into the replit configuration file and change the entry point value to the file name, classstudio1.js. So all you really need to do is to go in there and hit the, once you fork it, hit the run button. And if there are no error messages in the console, you are good to go. If you do have an error message because maybe you forked it earlier or something, um, then all you have to do is just make sure those two things are the same in those two different places. Um, and I do talk about it in my, in my video later, um, but I wanted you to know now because you're not gonna have access to that video until after class. Um, yeah, so the replit configuration uh, entry point value needs to be the same as the file name. But if you fork it, a fresh copy of it now, they've fixed it. Um, I haven't verified it, but they said they fixed it. So I believe them. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, this is your instructions. Um, it's got four parts um, and it's a, it's a fun little one, but it'll give you a really uh, good way to practice uh, setting up a class and running these methods and then um, actually using them to manipulate the values that are stored in the properties and uh, use one method inside of another method, um, all of that. It'll be really good practice. All right, so you guys have a great evening. And I will um, put the slides up in just a minute, and then I will also uh, get the lecture video to you later this evening.